What's up guys, Kyle here at Laser Everything and today we're doing some more work on the CO2 gantry, what I affectionately call the blue poo. So we're having a little bit of power trouble with the machine and I've been having it intermittently for a long time now and I suspect it's the e-stop. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is bypass our lid switch and see if it's the e-stop or something else going on. Let's get started. So we're back over here at the machine, and as you can see, I've already ripped out the lid switch button here. It's just pressed into the machine. And as you can see, the terminals are a little bit scuffed and burnt up, and the button was actually getting stuck. The spring didn't have enough push to push it back up from within the body of it. So what I've done is I've pushed it through, and I'm gonna walk around the machine here. And you're gonna see that I pulled the wires in and I've capped them off. And what this allowed me to do is bypass that so that I can double check and see if the emergency stop was the problem or that lid switch, just as a temporary fix to see what's going on. And when I plug the machine in, it works now, whether the emergency stop is in or out, it doesn't matter. So that's a problem. So that's not safe, so we gotta fix that too. So what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to pull this out. Now there's a bunch of different styles of emergency stops. This particular style has two little clips that kind of press over the body and clip on. So what we're gonna do is take a little flathead screwdriver here and pull up on one side and it should just pop right off, there we go. And then what we're gonna do, just take a look at this and just see if it's getting stuck or if we can see anything. This one happens to have a clear body so we can see through it. It's performing its action. It's pushing in and out just like it should. So we may just have poor contacts inside the emergency switch here. So we're gonna go ahead and have to remove this. So sometimes there's a retaining clip, sometimes they just screw off. So we're just gonna go ahead and see if either of the front or the back screws off at this point. The front came off, however, that's just the face of the emergency stop button seems to be holding in still. So we're gonna have to look around here. So we're gonna spin this around, see if we see a retaining clip. And oh, we got our retaining clip. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out. Should just pop right out. Now that either means this is going to pop off now and it's just retained by an internal clip. So we're gonna hunt around a little bit or it's gonna allow us to finish unscrewing it depending on if it's captive or a pop out. And here's that retaining clip. So we're gonna go ahead and I see that we're able to unscrew it some more, but we still need to pop it off of the little retaining shaft here. There we go, we popped it off and that's it. So that's out of our way. And as you can see, it's just held on by a little retaining clip in this case. Like I said, emergency stop buttons have a lot of different styles. So don't get hung up on the type. If you have the same style as this one, then you're good to go. But you may have to do a little hunting around Worst case scenario, if you have a little trouble getting it off and you already have a replacement, you can always cut it off. Just make sure you've removed power from the machine before messing with any electronics or any wiring and should be okay. Remember to do it safely. So all we have to do now, we are gonna unbox our little replacement emergency stop button here. And as you can see, it's a very similar style. Now, emergency stop buttons come in two types, normally closed and normally open. Normally closed is the most common, and that's what you're gonna likely want for your laser machine. That means essentially, is it normally going to be pushed in to power off or pushed in to power on? You want it pushed in to power off. So you wanna be able to slap that button and have everything shut down immediately. So opening the switch or undoing the e-stop should allow you to turn it on. So we're gonna go ahead and hunt around on this new switch, make sure we understand how it's gonna come out. And I have a funny feeling that this is a little button retention right here on the back. So we're gonna unscrew this just a little bit, make sure we give ourselves a little space to see what's going on. And I'm gonna pry on this little action here. Yep, I feel it given. So it's breaking away now. So now we just have to mount the button. So we're gonna start with that. So we're gonna unscrew this action. We're gonna go ahead and unscrew the mounting mechanism off the back here. And we have a little rubber washer on the front. We're gonna stick that right up against our e-stop label. That's optional, but just in case somebody else is operating your machine or somebody else is in the shop and you get hurt, they know exactly where to hit it. So I do recommend it, make sure it's facing out. And we're gonna crank this down so we know it's nice and tight. Now what we have left is we have to switch the wires over to the new back of the e-stop. 
the new back end, the business end, right? So these are just pass-throughs. It's part of the same circuit. It's not a positive or a negative or a common or a ground or anything like that. You don't even have to worry about it. What it's doing is it's breaking the connection apart so that it's not completing the circuit. So it doesn't matter which orientation these go on or anything like that. You just have to have one on the correct side and the other on the correct side and you're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and try and get these loose. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out here to a bigger Phillips head screwdriver because these things are cranked down and tight. All right, so now that we have them off of the old one, and like I said, it doesn't matter which wire goes where, it just matters that they're on the right side of the contacts. So what I mean by that is emergency stops generally either have two sets of wire inlets or one set of wire inlets. That means it can accept either two or four wires. And each set gives you the ability to cut power either to one object or two, just so that they're on two different circuits and they're not accidentally passing current to each other. So we just need to make sure we're on the correct half. They split in half. So you'll see that they're in this case labeled one and two. So we need to follow that and they're right above and below each other. So as long as you get the wires on the correct half, you're good to go. And they will be directly opposing each other. So we're gonna go ahead and get these screwed in. Now again, I'm doing this with the power turned off to the machine. It is completely unplugged, the power is drained, there's nothing going to it. So when I screw these together and I push this into the back of the e-stop button, I'm not gonna accidentally turn the machine on. Again, because we've bypassed the lid switch for troubleshooting purposes here. So these are directional generally, they won't just pop right on, they have to be oriented just right. So there are two flat edges to this, so I'm gonna go ahead and look for those here try and get those properly done. It is a little dark for me and a little tight, but I hope you guys have a good enough angle to see. And with that now popped on, we are good to go. It is retained on there perfectly. Now the machine is off and it is unplugged. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the e-stop is engaged so that it's not going to accidentally turn the machine on. I'm gonna plug the machine in and then we're gonna walk around to the front of the machine and it should still be off until we turn on the e-stop and have everything keyed on. We've opened up the e-stop by twisting and pulling it out and it's gonna home. We are back up and running. Well, that's it for this one, guys. We are back up and running with the gantry. All we needed was an emergency stop replacement there and to get rid of that broken switch. If you need an emergency stop button replacement, I left a link to the exact one I used. The only differences to keep in mind is there is a normally closed function and a normally open function. The functionality where you punch the button in and it kills the circuit is called a normally closed, which is in most cases what you want, but there are circumstances where you want normally open to turn something else on and usually half could be normally closed and half could be normally open. So you're just gonna wanna double check that. If you have any questions, jump into the comments section or check out our communities down in the description below, Facebook, Discord, and LMA. Just to note, LMA is the number one way to support our content and everything we do. We couldn't do what we do without all of our LMA subscribers and we appreciate all of you. If you like this content, get subscribed, hit the bell icon so you get notified anytime we upload more content and smash that like button so more people can see the content and might be able to help everybody out. We appreciate you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.